Some of you know about YC Lee, but it is the Young Southeast Asia Leaders Initiative. It is a White House initiative launched in 2013 by President Obama to strengthen leadership development and networking in Southeast Asia through a variety of programs and engagements, including U.S. educational and cultural exchanges, regional workshops, and grant funding. I'm pleased to say that we now have about 75,000 uh, members across the 10 countries in ASEAN. This conference is one of the examples of how young leaders in the region are committed to addressing some of the world's uh, greatest challenges. I am 100% confident that uh, the future of ASEAN is in good hands with young leaders like all of you. So this morning I would like to talk about why ASEAN matters to the United States and the world, and the important role young people play in ASEAN's future. And I hope for my comments, uh, you can feel that I hope that my comments will shed some light on how the United States sees ASEAN's identity. For nearly 40 years, the United States has been a partner of ASEAN. Next year will be our 40th anniversary, and ASEAN's 50th anniversary but we've really increased our engagement under the Obama administration. We were the first non-ASEAN country to appoint an ambassador back in 2010, and last November at the U.S. ASEAN Summit in Kuala Lumpur, we elevated our relationship to a strategic partnership. The new partnership will strengthen the role our collaboration plays in realizing our vision of a close-knit Southeast Asia that offers security, opportunity, and dignity to all of its citizens. The new status is also a recognition of the fact that the ASEAN-US relationship is very important to both of us, and that we cooperate on vital issues across ASEAN's three communities, which I'm sure you know well, are the political security, economic, and socio-cultural communities. To commemorate and further our strategic partnership, President Obama invited all 10 ASEAN leaders to attend a historic summit in Sunnylands, California in February. This was the first ever standalone ASEAN-US summit in the United States and the first summit that ASEAN had as an official community, which launched at the end of December last year. I was there, lucky enough to be there. It was really a quite remarkable event. Um, very um, informal for a leader summit, uh, and very friendly, with a beautiful backdrop of the San Ysidro Mountains. It's quite special. Now I know you are all here because you have your own reasons for loving Southeast Asia, your citizens of it, or former citizens, and knowing that it's important but let me tell you why, as the U.S. Ambassador to ASEAN, why we think ASEAN is so important. First, ASEAN is important to American prosperity. ASEAN, as you know, is a rapidly growing region with an expanding young workforce and expanding middle class. The ASEAN community, with capital C, is good for U.S. business because many of our companies would like to take a regional approach. That means more jobs back home, as well as more jobs here in Southeast Asia. So it's a, very much a win-win uh, outcome. Two-way trading goods between the United States and ASEAN grew to 217 billion in 2014, making ASEAN America's fourth largest trading partner. The ASEAN middle class is growing by leaps and bounds, and the workforce is full of young people like you, with more than 300 million people under the age of 35. 
The newly launched ASEAN Economic Community is bringing more opportunities as it reduces barriers to trade, services, capital, <coughs> and skilled labor flow. The second reason for our engagement in ASEAN is that ASEAN is an excellent partner with us on transnational challenges that we all face, climate change, illegal fishing, terrorism, human trafficking, wildlife trafficking, disaster response, to name a few of them. A particular challenge that I focused on in my time as ambassador is the degradation of marine and coastal ecosystems here in ASEAN. Southeast Asia is home to a greater concentration of marine biodiversity than anywhere else in the world. It is a truly precious resource that you have. The waters support many thousands of fish and corals that are vital for maintaining healthy ecosystems and for providing food and livelihoods for millions of people in Southeast Asia and around the world. This marine bounty, and by extension the food security and economic security of many people in the region, though, is unfortunately under severe threat. One cause is IUU fishing, illegal fishing that is, illegal, unreported, unregulated fishing to be exact. But climate change, pollution, um, island construction are also wreaking havoc on the marine environment. These combined to pose a serious threat to the security of people who depend on fish as protein and who depend on being fishers for their livelihoods. We're working closely with ASEAN to address uh, this challenge and the other challenges that I, that I mentioned. Um, and you can do your part by trying to eat small fish, uh, not the big ones like shark and tuna, uh, and to avoid using plastic uh, bags and bottles. It's up to you, because I'm too old, but it's up to you to make these things uh, socially unacceptable. It should be very uncool to eat shark and tuna and to use plastic water bottles. Small changes like this, um, once they accumulate across your lifetime and across communities, they can actually themselves make a really big difference. The third reason that the United States will have a long-term focus on ASEAN is because an integrated, unified ASEAN is politically, geopolitically stabilizing. It's stabilizing because ASEAN works to institutionalize cooperation. That's what it does. It doesn't threaten anyone. It's dedicated to nonviolence and it seeks strategic independence. ASEAN forms the stable center of a region with multiple big powers. No one ASEAN country can easily stand up to a big power who takes actions that could increase tensions or risks, but ASEAN as a group can and has. We want Asia to continue to enjoy the peace that has allowed so many to prosper, and ASEAN is a really critical part of that. ASEAN leads by example. It has helped to preserve stability and peace among its diverse member nations for nearly 50 years. Fourth, uh, ASEAN convenes Asia. At the East Asia Summit last November and at the upcoming one in September in Laos, um, President Obama and leaders of half the world discuss key strategic issues facing the region and facing the globe. The historical relationships among big powers are long and they've varied a lot over the course of ASEAN's 50 year history. But today, the United States, Australia, Canada, China, Japan, South Korea, India, Russia, New Zealand, and the EU, as dialogue partners, engage very constructively with ASEAN and with each other under the ASEAN umbrella. In economics and finance, politics and security, and cultural cooperation and exchanges. No one else can bring all the countries of Asia together like ASEAN. Finally, in some ways, one of the most important in my list of five reasons why the United States is focused on ASEAN is that ASEAN plays a vital role in advancing the rules-based order in the Asia Pacific. ASEAN connects, the, connects 10 countries and 10 peoples. And how does it do that? It does it through common rules, norms, procedures, standards. Three important principles connecting ASEAN are respect for the rule of law, nonviolent resolution of disputes, 
and the upholding of international law. This sets rules and norms. This set of rules and norms supports all other connections among ASEAN nations. Rules and norms create predictability. They create a sense of fairness because all countries have the same burden of compliance and responsibility. Over time, when countries follow common rules and norms, they create habits of cooperation. Rules and norms and laws, in other words, create trust. It's not easy to create trust among nation states. Those of you in political science know that. But in ASEAN, because the 10 countries have agreed to basic principles and built up a virtual infrastructure of rules and norms around these principles, they have developed trust. For years to come, Southeast Asia will continue to play a significant role in promoting peace, and stability, and economic prosperity and dignity so all its human and natural resources can thrive. ASEAN is helping to underwrite peace in the region and is charting a course for an integrated, sustainable, inclusive, rules-based ASEAN community. So for the reasons I just named, and for many others, America will be here deeply engaged in ASEAN and on ASEAN's terms, because ASEAN's terms are about the rule of law and respect for international law for generations to come. So let's talk about all of you for a minute here in the audience. You, as young leaders of ASEAN, are part of a broader ASEAN community, and you can play a part in making this beautiful, diverse, and dynamic region even better. Consider yourselves all ambassadors from ASEAN to ASEAN. I urge you to take your past experience of what you're going to learn here at this conference, along with your passion and commitment, and make a difference. This could be in your house, in your neighborhood, in your country, in Southeast Asia, or beyond. Also, as young leaders, I want you to understand that ideas can be very powerful, and ideas can change the world. A good idea can transform the landscape. You think about the idea of an ASEAN community, or the idea of recycling, or artificial intelligence. So I advise you to stick with your ideas, be loyal to them, and when the going gets tough, to adapt and improve them, but not to let go. You will need patience and perseverance and a plan to get your idea manifested in the real world. So here's an important thing that I'd like to say, which is take risks. Do something that you're not sure you're capable of doing. This is a message particularly for the women in the audience. The worst that can happen is that you will be a failure, but failure can be your absolutely best teacher. If you fail, learn from it, try a different angle, revise your approach, fine-tune your idea. But if you're really going to do something new, risk is absolutely inevitable. Innovation comes from change, and change is by definition risky. It's like that song by Kelly Clarkson. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Stand a little taller. Put steps even lighter. What doesn't kill you what doesn't kill what doesn't kill you makes you a fighter. One of the secrets of success of the American innovation system is that we accept that people will fail and we let them try again. Many tech companies in Silicon Valley won't even hire someone unless they've already failed at least once. I'm grateful that I failed in getting some of the jobs that I really wanted during my career, because if I had gotten them, I wouldn't be here with you today, standing here working with President Obama in the best job I can imagine. President Obama said, quote, making your mark on the world is hard. If it were easy, everybody would do it. But it's not. It takes patience, it takes commitment, and it comes with plenty of failure along the way. The real test is not whether you avoid this failure, because you won't. It's whether you let it harden or shame you into inaction, or whether you learn from it, and whether you choose to persevere. So I expect you all to persevere. ASEAN and the world needs you. I'm very looking forward to seeing what comes out of this conference. I promise that I will read your policy conclusions and take them seriously. So thank you very much.